Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. An opportunity came up to do some filming while we were out doing an assignment for one of our geology classes. We had to find some kind of landform or outcrop and describe how we would age date it, what processes we would use. And while we were here, we decided to do a little bit of exploring and looking at the different rocks because of this outcrop looked really intriguing. And we ended up finding some interesting things in it, which you'll see in a moment. So this outcrop here, most of it is basalt with some interbedding of, I believe, lake bed sediments. There's actually two different members of basalt basalt here. The bottom layer is the Grand Rond basalt, and then the upper basalt layers are the Priest Rapids member, which are part of the Columbia River basalt flows. Getting close to this rock outcrop was actually a little dangerous because while we were there, occasionally rocks would fall down the hillside. And while I was doing my video assignment for my class, Jesse was helping me film me talking about this outcrop, and we so happened to get one of those rock falls on recording, which you can see here. <laughs> then we have the processes of weathering. I would say that was worth some extra credit points because this is for a geomorphology class, which is a study of Earth's landscape and surface and how it develops and changes over time, such as with processes like weathering, like those rocks falling down the hill. The slide in that video, however, wasn't even the largest. While we were there, before we did any filming, we went up onto the outcrop to get some closer looks at the rock. Well, while we were there, some rock decided it wanted to go, so it broke free right above us, came tumbling down, and before I could really react, rocks went flying past me, and uh, one was about the size of maybe, a, ah, probably smaller than a volleyball, and it bounced off the slope, went flying about head level, and went down to the road. Whenever you're near outcrops like this or cliff sides with rock, there's always that hazard of rocks coming crashing down, so it's always important to be aware. Anyways, while we were looking at the rock, I believe it was the top layer of the lower basalt right before the lake bed sediments began, we discovered some veins of common opal. So we dug around in that and you can see a couple of those clips here. So Jesse was uncovering this. It looks to be like an opalized vein. You see a little bit right there. Pretty neat. Let's dig her out. There's some darker like iron layers or something. And then right where that basalt made contact, it looks like it just baked the upper portions of the lake bed as it was, uh, you know, traveling across. Got some really red coloring on this stuff. I'm not sure what that is. Probably just iron. There's some of the stuff Jesse was pulling out. Some kind of, yeah, that glossy brown as you were describing it. Nothing's come down yet, luckily. Jesse's working on some of the vein of the stuff. Here's something he was showing me. You can see it in there. I'm guessing, we're guessing common opal. Some of it looks kind of glassy. Looks like there's a vein of it here. It looks like it's in the weathered top layers of the basalt. Carefully excavated, there's some reds. Really deteriorating. Hey, look, a root. <laughs> Something we needed for our little project. For carbon dating. Oh man, it is just so crumbly though. Okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, you can see how the glossiness in this. Oh, and that, that red just like crunches in your fingers. Yeah. But it's so... It, too bad it's not surviving. There's a, oh, there's a vein of it with red right there. You see that? Maybe further in, it's more resistant. There we go. There. You can see there's just these little veins of something. We're thinking... Some of it definitely looks like opal once you get a decent piece of it, but there's these reds. It's just really weathered, deteriorated. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, yeah. 
very weathered. So we got more of the vein stuff here. I'm gonna dig this out. I can see the veins of it here. Oh. I'm starting something. Oh no. Oh, what's underneath? Oh, that's that. All right, so we're a little further down now at a different outcrop alongside the road. Yeah, you can see that, it's some really s soft sand. I wonder if this uh, could have been the beach portion of the lake or something. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, who knows? More research is needed for that question. A little collapse up there of the basalt at some point. That's some thick, thick sand. I can see how thick that sand was with the basalt on top of it. And then all those hills over here, that, that's just all basalt. The Columbia River flood basalts were a very large uh, sequence with some very thick basaltic lava flows that cover most of Washington, Oregon, and parts of Idaho. see the birds have been making their homes some of the sand all right so before I end this video I want to show you guys something kind of cool I've been working on for a while so here in this part of the video you can see this mountain now this mountain is the ancient remains of a volcanic system I actually did some old uh, videos here and if you want to check it out it'll be in the corner I like to make geologic overlays for Google Earth which you're about to see here the reason why I like to do this is it becomes easier to read because looking at a regular geologic map can be a little chaotic and sometimes small details go unnoticed. So by overlaying these maps onto Google Earth, I can make it so I can focus on one particular rock group, like the volcanic rocks that make up this mountain peak of this old ancient volcanic system, as you can see here. Doing this makes it really easy to identify the almost the exact location of where these rocks can be found. And here you can see a tiny group of the same volcanic rocks, which might have gone unnoticed if I was looking at the regular geologic map. And here is the outcrop where we found the common opal and the basalt. The two different colors there represent the two different groups of basalt. The unmapped area is where the lake bed sediments and other sands are. So maps like this can definitely be helpful. Making them in Google Earth can be a little tedious at times. So this is the end of this short video. I hope to make some videos when I can. College is keeping me busy and with all the snow on the ground it's hard to find places to go find rock. So it might be a while before I can get another video up, but I do have some other video ideas that really don't involve me going out into the outdoors that much. So hopefully soon I can get another video up. But until then, I'll see you all later. Take care.